today I want to talk to you all about slings on long guns. Um, for my people in the states with assault weapons bans, um, this might be your state legal rifle, uh, also known sometimes as an other firearm. Um, so this could be AR-15s, it could be AK-47s, it could be uh, M1 carbine, it could be a PC carbine, um, any pretty much semi-automatic style rifle that's modern sporting rifle type thing. I mean, talking World War One and World War Two and later. So here we go. Slings. So slings are important to have on long guns in case you need to let go of the firearm and do something else. Like maybe your firearm malfunctions or it runs out of ammunition, but you need to draw your pistol and engage a adversary close range or medium range or whatever, but you need to engage an adversary immediately. Um, maybe you have to sling your rifle to go over a fence. Maybe you need to let go of your rifle to drive your car. Maybe you need to let go of your rifle to do medical on somebody. Um, maybe you need to let go of your rifle to get on a map to fix something around your house during a time of disaster when there's strife out and, out and danger out in the streets. So they're important objects to have on your, your uh, long guns. So, slings. There's several different kinds of slings. So I started the f first rifle I ever had back uh, in 1990 uh, was an AR-15 Sporter. I don't even think the thing had a sling on it. Um, shortly after that, I joined the Army, Connecticut Army National Guard, but I went to basic training at Fort Benning and I had a really um, kick-ass drill sergeant and he took our two-point parade sling, which is a sling on an M16A2 or an M4 or something where we go from the buttstock here, loop up to here, no quick adjustment or anything like that. And he took that sling and we would go out in field to do you know, training stuff. He would give us these little devices, those little triangular piece, and the point would go around the A post of the A2, so that's the front sight post, the angled portion of it. It sits on the gas block and then the back section was looped like this and the sling would go through that so we take our parade sling off we loop it through that and then we would bring it to the buttstock and we'd use 550 cord if i remember right we use 550 cord and duct tape to duct tape duct tape it to the stock um so it was on top so in essence it would go like this so it went from being underneath to over the gun like this so then we could then sh have the gun around us and have it like this but it was not quick adjustable so you kind of had to set the length to where you could do multiple things with it. Um, it was a good option for what it was at the time. I'm in the military. Some other slings come out. I don't remember if I purchased one for my rifle um, after that or not. I do remember when I was got into law enforcement that I was my first rifle I was issued was a G36C. I think that was the medium sized one. Um, I don't remember what it had for a sling. If it had a sling at all, I don't think they issued us a sling. Uh, I ended up putting a, I think, I started out with a three-point sling, like you'd find on an MP5. And that's where it, it loops around the body, and then from there it goes to the front of the rifle, and that loop attaches to the back. I think mine had a quick disconnect. So the rifle would sit on your body like this. Um, if you made it loose enough, you could drive it out like this. Otherwise, like you hit the quick deke disconnect here then you could drive the rifle out and then bring it back to your body you reconnected it here eventually because of the heavy body armor i was wearing i think i went with a one point sling that connected uh back here on an end plate on that rifle I, i'm pretty sure or maybe it was on the stock i forget uh single point sling so i used a traditional two point sling i used a three point sling then i went to a single single point sling and then when i left there and i went you know i was just in patrol function in a different police department we got AR-15s and I went out and bought myself a two-point sling. The first two-point sling, I don't know how to put it, tactical two-point sling, more combat effective two-point sling that I had was a Vickers Tactical, not a Vickers Tactical, excuse me, a um, Viking Tactics two-point sling. Great sling. So I could, it went, you know, from, as a right-handed shooter, I'd make it go from here to somewhere over here on the rifle. Uh, you can hook it up in many different ways depending on the kind of rifle you had and uh, it had a, a 
the front end of it, you there was a stra you could pull a strap to tighten it, and then there was a, uh, a latching mechanism you pull to loosen it. So tighten, or actually you pulled back on the strap to loosen, you pulled down on the strap to tighten, if I remember right. Great sling, worked well. I ended up getting the padded version. I'm telling you right now, all my slings are padded for the most part at this point. Padded slings are just more comfortable. There's no reason not to have that in case you're not wearing body armor and stuff like that, and the thing's just sitting on your shoulder and your neck. Um, Good sling. I was never fond of that piece of strap hanging off. There was a way to Velcro that to, to it, but um, not my, I liked it a lot. It was a really good sling. Not my favorite sling anymore. Eventually I started working with different slings. I had a Vickers Tactical sling by, by um, Blue Force Gear. I had Magpul M1 and an M2 sling. I had the Haley Strategic two point sling. Um, I had, I've had T-Rex Arms two-point slings. I have Ferro Concepts two-point slings and Proctor two-point slings. Proctor two-point slings are probably my favorite. I started with the traditional one where I had um, no padding on it. And when you made padded ones, I bought padded ones. Um, the Ferro Concepts come with pads on them. The Haley ones come with pads. Um, the reason the Proctor is my favorite, and I got one right here, okay, is easeability of use. I mean, he is big into minimalism and, and easeability of use. And um, I'll tell you what, this thing just doesn't fail on me when I'm using it. So when I have it, there's this, this buckle here that loosens and tightens and it works very well you know, um, for what it is. So I can tighten it to my body, I want it tighter. I can tighten it up more, you know, and, and get it where I want it and have it set how I need it. If I want to tighten more, I can pull it out, tighten it up even more, get it tighter in my body, right? Um, or easy, easily, I can grab that buckle to loosen, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten. Um, the pad is not too big, it's not too small. It's a little flat, but nonetheless, it, it does a really good job. It doesn't rub my neck hard or raw or anything like that. Um, I put it on QD mounts, as you can see on the front and back, instead of uh, the traditional mounting system that he used with that 550 cord with that um, loop system on it. Uh, the 550 cord was just too long and it added a whole bunch of length that didn't do anything for me. So I ended up getting rid of that. Um, other slings, so like the Ferro Concept sling, the Slingster, I like this. The pad you can see is much bigger on it. Um, it uses a more complicated buckle um, than the Proctor sling, but otherwise a good sling. It's you know a little bit complicated to set up at first. Make sure you read the directions. It's not like a traditional sling where you just take up the slack here. There's some stuff you have to do. But I like the Slingster a lot. They come with some pretty cool colors like M81 Woodland, which Frank Proctor doesn't do, unfortunately. Um, Haley, Haley, the Haley sling I have, the webbing was too soft, and what would happen is it would consistently bind up in the buckle on me. Otherwise, it was a nice sling. Padding was nice. Buckles were nice. Minimalistic for the most part. Um, the Blue Force gear ones, the webbing was a little thick for my liking. And the first version that I had didn't move that great. Uh, and But otherwise, good good design. Um, and then the, the T-Rex arms that I got last year, their sling, I found the padding to be rougher than it needed to be. Um, you know, trying to keep costs down and make money, I get it. I'd rather pay a little bit more for material that I don't feel it's as rough. And, I know, oh my God, your skin and all this stuff. Man, listen, I'm 51. I've been carrying rifles since I was 18, and I really don't need to listen to it. If I want a sling that's more comfortable, I'm going to buy a sling that's more comfortable. I'm going to spend a little bit more money on it and buy one that I feel is more comfortable. I don't like it when the edges of the padding, on a, you know, I do a 10-hour training day teaching, and I'll do two of those in a row sometimes. I don't like when the padding is rubbing and actually causing abrasion on my skin. I just like it to be nicer. Otherwise, it was a good sling. The buckle worked well. The, the, tri the glide buckle worked fine. The, the material was stiff enough where it didn't bind up on me or anything like that. So that's my, my slings, how I, the ones that I've used and how I would rate them for the most part. Um, Proctor and then the, the Ferro Concepts and all the others fall underneath that. Um, how do I mount my slings? Okay, so mounting slings for me is very particular. I like it a certain way. First thing I say is I like multiple mounting points. I like the, abil the ability to have modularity of how I mount my slings and my rifles for different mission sets, okay? Um, there's buckles you can buy that allow you to turn your standard two-point sling into a one-point sling by adding them onto the, 
to the webbing back here. That's not a bad option to have, folks. Um, it comes from the, as far as I know, it comes from the Magpul MS, uh, MS1 sling, you know, where it had the, you connect it in the back at the uh, here at the end plate, and then you had a loop and you would connect the front, I think they call it a paraclip, paraclip to that buckle, or you could take that paraclip and go from here to the buckle, down here to a uh, paraclip uh, clip on the front um, somewhere. So I like the fact you go from one point to two point. So one point slings, easy to move shoulder to shoulder, easy to move the gun up, down, left, right, stuff like that. Great if you use a heavy body armor for moving the gun around. But they don't allow stability. So they don't give you, um, and they don't allow, they don't give you stability and they don't give you what's the word to look for? Um, security. Like I like it. So I could take a two point sling like this, I can tighten it to give myself a little bit more stable shooting platform. I can tighten it to my body to make the gun more stable when I'm not holding it so it's not slinging around. You know, a single point sling, you'll see they'll, they'll move like a pendulum on you unless you lock it into a buckle on your equipment. This I simply tie down tight. I throw it on my back, tie it down there, throw it to my front, tie it down there, or not tie it down, but snug it down nice and tight. Um, so I like that. Uh, the other thing is that I can do with these um, is I can turn them into one point slings. Generally, most one point slings are just one point slings. These you can modify them to become one or two, which is super nice. The other thing is a single point sling. If you, somebody grabs your rifle, it's a little harder. I've done a bunch of force on force with rifles. Um, and I can tell you being in fights with people in the force on force with a rifle on me and them grabbing the rifle, I felt it was easier to control them when I had a rifle that had a two point sling on it, two point tactical style sling. Uh, not a parade sling. It was easier to control them than uh, a single point sling. A single point sling, I felt like they can almost move me around more, you know. So, and that's leverage because I have two points of contact on this thing. And I can pull it front, I can pull it back versus a single point where I just have to, you know, I don't have the ability to go this way or this way. I just have to go back or forth. Um, so, that's one of the reasons why, another reason why I like two point slings a lot. You know, so your two point sling. Get it on you, right? All of a sudden, I want to, I want to stow it to do some kind of maneuver. I swim through it, tighten that buckle up. Now I can go down and do medical. I can climb a fence. I can do whatever it is. I can pull out a map. I can talk to people without having a gun in front of me. Uh, single point slings you can't do that with. So I can secure it like this really well. I can get to my pistol. I can run my pistol without this thing being super obtrusive and in the way. If it's on the front, same thing. Let's come back through. Okay, now I've got it it's in this particular sling in its tightest position. And it's pretty tight to my body. Somebody grabs this, I can pull from here, I can pull from here. Um, it's out of the way, so I can still do things like talk to people uh, and write stuff down, or I can give things out, water, food, I can do medical to a certain extent like this. I can possibly climb, go over stuff. I can get in a car with a gun like this and have it secured on me, um, you know, and just be a little bit more secure to my body. So the way I secure a two point sling is this. Okay. I like securing it on the buttstock to start with. Some people will secure the back part of the sling here to the end plate. I like securing it on the buttstock right here with a QD. Let's talk about the securing points for a second. So you, QDs, you have paraclips, and then you have the um, snap hooks. Okay, so if I wasn't going with QDs, if I was going to refit all my rifles, I'd probably go with snap hooks. I like the paraclips by Magpul a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, but they they're not cheap, and um, you got to make sure you lock them. Otherwise, they can, they can come undone fairly easy just by pressure. And there's a little lock you got to push, a little uh, cross bolt lock. Uh, but I like those a lot. But paraclips, not paraclips, um, snap hooks seem to be pretty easy uh, to, to maneuver. So I like those a lot. QDs, I like because I can change the sling from position to position to position. But I can do the same thing with a snap hook. And I can do the same thing with, with a paraclip if I set my, my rifle up the right way. 
I just have QDs. I'm sticking with QDs just because I have them and I'm not going to spend a bunch of money to change right now. doesn't mean it's the best way. It's just one of least three ways. Okay. I've seen people do this stuff with 550 cord. Just you can't take 550 cord out and off as easy. Um, so generally I'll, I'll hook it up here on the butt stock on my right side. The reason is when I mount the gun, okay, so when I mount my firearm, it's riding on the outside. The stock rides on the inside like this. You can see right here. If I have to drive the gun up to my shooting position, the sling ends up falling back here out of the way. It's not coming up between my cheek and my shoulder and, and, the, and the stock right here. It's, it's nice and out of the way, and I like that a lot. So that's why I mount them on the outside of the gun. So as a left-handed shooter, I'd put it on the left side. Right-handed shooter, I'd put it on the right side. Like I said, you'll see a lot of few people run them right here to the QD on the back. I keep that QD on there in case I want to do that for whatever particular reason. Um, it's a simple feature to add on to a rifle. It doesn't cost a lot if you're building the rifle, if it doesn't already come assembled from the factory. And um, it just gives you an option. It doesn't add much in the way of weight, a little bit, but not much. Uh, it just gives you another option. Then what I do up front is I don't like mounting to the rail at the um, nine and three o'clock, depending on which you're left handed or right handed. The reason I don't like this is because when I go to put a mag in, so I drive a mag in, I hit the bolt release, and then when I have to come forward, I have to drive my hand under the sling and then up onto the rifle. So, and now this, so this one's built into the rail, right? See that? Now imagine I have a QD point that I have to attach to a pick rail or onto M-Lock or something, and that's going to be sticking out even farther. So um, this one mounts into the rail is a little bit more low profile, but by taking an offset mount, see this offset mount right here? You see that? That's impact weapons components. It's my favorite offset mount at this point. Um, that offset mount sits nice and, nice and compact to the side of the rail. I'll put them anywhere from, you know, somewhere on the rail, not on the receiver generally, on the rail from here forward in this area right here, depending on what I have on the gun or if I want to set one up a little different than another. Um, by putting it there, what happens is now, okay, if I drive a mag into the gun, hit the bolt release, and I go to drive forward, I just drag my thumb down, I can come right up around that and under it like that. So I like putting those offsets. I think it's a great option, adds a little bit of weight to your gun. If you already have it built into the rail, you're gonna have to spend a few dollars on it, 40 bucks or something like that. Uh, Haley Strategic makes a version, and I, they make one with their brand on it. I think it's made by Impact Weapons Components, and then you, have, you can go right to Impact Weapons Components and buy them or any number of other websites. Uh, Impact Weapons Components uh, makes a lot of good accessories for uh, rifles and stuff. So I'll mount up here. I stopped mounting up front because I found that when I had the gun mounted, if it was up here, I had to move equipment around. This gun, I put the flashlight on the left side because I was running a um, D-ball on it for a while and I didn't have the room on the right side to run it. So I had it on the left side. No, it wasn't a D-ball, I forget what IR it was. So I, it's on the left side. Normally my flashlights would sit on this side out of the way so I can get my hand all the way up on the gun. Not that I can't do that now, but it would get the you'd get the front, um, this, this pad farther forward. Um, so this will probably get swapped around real soon um, to the other side. So then I can uh, move the pad forward to get my hand farther out on the rifle to get more control over it if I need it, okay? Um, so that's how I like to run them. So again, as you know, if I was left-handed, it'd be sitting on this side. As a right-handed shooter, it's gonna sit on the left side. So front's on the left, back is on the right of the buttstock. Um, if I was going to put it in the in the um, end plate QD, I would have it come over this side right there. Um, actually, I don't even think it matters that much, but I would have it come over this side right there probably. Uh, yeah, because um, that's the way I've run it in the past, and it seemed to work out fine for me. Now, that's the only way, again, running it on the left side probably wouldn't be a problem, and it actually probably allow for more maneuverability of the firearm. The last thing I'll talk about is sling security. Like, how to tie your sling down when you're storing your firearm, if it's going to be in a vehicle and you have to get it in and out of vehicles, or if you are going to, you know, I, I use storage straps for vehicles, but more, these guns sit in safe more than they sit in vehicles, it's ready to go. 
So what I do is I'll buy some kind of secure, securing system for it. There's a bunch of different options out there. Right now, I like sentry straps. So this is a sentry strap. Um, and it's magnetic, okay? Not the best thing in the world, but it, it works, and it works well for me. So far, it's worked in all my training classes. So what I do is I end up, fold, I end up folding the sling. So I come around the buttstock. I end up folding the sling, and then I come around like this, and I click the two magnets together right there. Make sure it's nice and flat and tight. And now I can run the gun if I needed to. I can get to the charging handle. Okay, I can shoot, bolt release, safety, everything's accessible um, with the sling right there. Not a bad option. And when I need a sling, I don't have to touch the safety strap. I simply pull the sling out, the safety strap pops off, and then it'll generally swing back around and connect under here um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, so I like that a lot. I like the center strap. It's probably my favorite at this point. Uh, there's a bunch of options out there. Oh, I have, um, this one uses a C-clip on this Feral Concepts. A buddy of mine runs this system, so I thought I'd give it a try. What happens is up here, you mount a C-clip as your second buckle. Uh, so see, it's got an opening right here. And I'll take the, I'll take the, the sling, I'll loosen it up a little. I find a spot on the sling where I want to put, drive this through it. So I have like a slot here. There's a slot up here I can do. There's a slot right there. I'm going to go to the slot where the back of the sling attaches to the front. I'm gonna lock it in there, and then I'm gonna pull it tight like that. Okay. There I go. Now I have a secured sling to the rifle. It's nice and tight, it fits in the safe. It's not hanging on the floor, which is a problem I had. If I had this thing in a car, sitting on the seat next to me, and I go to grab it, the sling's not gonna grab on it and pull on anything. Um, it's gonna be secured to the rifle, and I can still use my rifle without a problem get to all the controls now this slings a little bit like this padded slings a little bit bigger on these you know so get to, um, to the charging handle right here you know takes a little bit more maneuverability but I can still do it so if I grab the sand out of the car if I got to charge it I can still charge it. I just got to come over and make sure this isn't blocking if it is I'd have to move it out of the way which would cost me a second or two um sentry shop at the moment is probably my favorite I just I don't know, it just is, just my favorite, uh, probably, I don't know, I just is, I just like the concept, I like the easeability of it, um, I don't have to add anything to the sling like I did on the Ferro Concept one here. So, you know, look for a good, a quick adjust two-point sling, you got options for, for attaching it to the rifle and where you're going to attach it, know the pros and cons to each attachment point so you can figure out what works best for you don't go solely based off of what i'm telling you um there's nothing that says you can't try different spots to see what works for you getting some knowledge watch some videos go to some training classes listen to different instructors um and and then try different things i mean all of this stuff i've tried i won't try everything on the rifle that i use for self-defense because i want to make sure a system works or doesn't work or make sure i like it or don't like it before i put it on something so that'll have something that's tried and true that I've used for a while. If I find that I find something that I like a lot and I find that it works really well for me, I will then switch one of my self-defense rifles because I have two of them. Both of them I'll switch to that design. That way I have uniformity across rifle systems. So, um, you know, try it for yourself. Give it a swirl, see how each thing goes. Uh, most instructors have something good to say about everything. You just gotta pick which one works for you. Um, you got any questions or comments, hit me up in the chat below. I'll try to get back to you sooner than later on it. Uh, if there's anything you want to see me do a video on, let me know. Okay. Not only can you hit me up in the chats below, if you go to my website, you can contact me via messaging or an email and let me know. Um, please go to my website, sign up for emails, hit up my social media, give me uh, some likes, some shares and save some stuff. Uh, it's huge and then as far as this YouTube stuff goes uh, please subscribe click the uh, alarm button to let so you can see any latest videos I do like one a month and then um, share with your friends get them to sign up and get my videos and stuff uh, it's appreciated I'm not doing this the videos for money I'm just doing it because I enjoy doing it and getting information out uh, so all of that is, is greatly appreciated hopefully I'll see y'all at a class someday here in Connecticut feel free to travel if you have a range somewhere and wherever you are and they are taking guest instructors i'll come out to you if you're close enough i'll bring 30 pieces of steel with me um, depending on what kind of class it is 
Uh, if you're too far away, you know, I'm not driving all that steel over, across state line, across uh, the country, right? But if you live close enough, somewhere on the East Coast, man, I'll, I'll, I'll trailer my steel and bring it on down. Not a problem. Um, PageForformerShooting.com. Hit me up in messages and emails, like I said, and I'll come out to you. Hey, everybody, that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoy this. Remember, it's a dangerous world out there. You still need to get out and enjoy it, though. Okay? Stay safe. Thank you.